11 years ago, beacons were added into Minecraft. They became one of the most difficult blocks to obtain in survival. So way back then, I had the crazy idea to try to make an automatic farm to get beacons. After working on it for years, I had finally completed the first automatic beacon farm in Minecraft. Despite a couple individuals who are known for diminishing others' accomplishments trying to mock it, it was well received by the rest of the Minecraft community. So I proudly continued to push the limits of this game as I had been doing for the 7 years prior. Even going as far as designing an automatic farm for almost every item in the game. But a lot of things in my Farm Everything series still had to be crafted by the player. But this all changed with the introduction of the crafter in 1.21 Minecraft. With it, I can now use all my previous knowledge to make the craziest farm in Minecraft an infinitely automatic beacon producing machine. Out of the three main ingredients needed to make a beacon, let's first take a look at how I got an unlimited source of nether stars. But in order to get nether stars, we first need to kill a wither, which means we need to summon them in with a source of wither skulls and soul sand. The only way you can get a skull is by killing wither skeletons, with the rare chance of less than 3% of dropping a skull when killed by player means. So we'll need to get an unlimited source of wither skeletons, and the only spot where they spawn in is here in the nether fortresses in the nether dimension. And within these, they can either spawn on top of nether brick anywhere among the larger fortress body box. The other place they can spawn in is on top of any velvet block that is directly inside of one of the fortress structures. So out of our two choices, we're going to go with putting the farm inside of the smaller structure so we can use a wider variety of blocks rather than having to be limited by nether brick. And out of all the different structures that can be found within the nether fortress, one of the biggest areas that wither skeletons can spawn in is this intersection here. The placing in some blocks produces a large 19 by 19 area where nether fortress mobs can spawn in. But besides the wither skeletons that we want, we're also getting blazes, magma cubes, skeletons, and zombified piglins. But we only need the wither skeletons and all the other mobs are just actually slowing the farm down. That's because the game will only put in so many of these hostile mobs, so if there is a different one already here, the game might not have room to put in another wither skeleton. But we're also limited on real estate since we only have this 19 by 19 area, and for every mob that's sitting on it, another mob cannot spawn directly inside of it. So all the area that they're standing on is no longer valid for another wither skeleton spawn. Now wither skeletons will give the player the wither effect, which makes them immune to getting this effect themselves. And it just so happens that there is another thing that gives this, and that is wither roses. And since wither skeletons are immune to the wither effect that the roses will give off, they are the only thing that can spawn inside of them. So by carpeting the ground with wither roses, we can prevent all the other mobs from spawning on top. So far so good, but since you only get a limited number of hostile mobs spawning in your world around the player, what stops the game from not putting them over here, but instead putting them in other parts of the world? That's because the game can place mobs in up to 128 blocks away from the player in a complete sphere. On top of that, to effectively get all the loot from the mobs, we need to bring them all to a single killing machine where we can kill them rather than having to hunt down every mob and kill it ourselves. Now in the past, lowering down your render distance would cause this so the mobs could only spawn near the player. But this was changed so now even if you have lower render distance as well as simulation distance, the mobs can still spawn in the entire area of the sphere. One way we can stop them from spawning outside of the area that we dedicated is to come in and place in blocks that they can't spawn on, such as like slabs or carpets. This is because the game only places in mobs on top of blocks that are a full meter high and then also occupy the entire 1 by 1 meter area. And because slabs and carpets are not a full meter tall, they can't spawn on top of them. And they also can't spawn inside of them, because if the mob would be placed in, you can see it would be colliding with the actual block. And even something thin as carpet will still collide with the mob, and the game does not allow this. The game also won't spawn them on top of something that is a meter tall, but not quite a full 1 by 1 meter cube, like this chain here. So we can use any blocks that fit these properties to cover up all valid locations. But there's also another spot where mobs won't spawn, and that's on top of any type of redstone related device. Blocks like redstone dust as well as buttons don't actually collide with the mob the same way like a slab does. Notice that when you run into a slab, your player is actually affected by it, where you can walk directly through a button. Typically, these blocks will allow mobs to spawn inside them, but since they're redstone component, there is an exception, which was added to stop mobs from spawning inside of people's redstone contraptions. But placing down blocks across such a large area would be extremely tedious. 
So one way we can cut down on this is just finding a fortress that is inside of a huge lava lake. The next best place to build a farm would be inside of a soul sand valley biome. This is because the game actually restricts how many hostile mobs can spawn in here and how far apart they can spawn. But mobs spawning inside of the fortress won't be affected by this limitation. Meaning that you won't get too many spawning outside and most of them will be inside of your fortress farm. So by standing where our farm is and looking around, we can't really see very much of the nether rack surrounding biome. And since the hostile mobs won't spawn in the lava, we only have to worry about spawn proofing the nearby fortress pieces. Now using some type of slab is pretty cheap, but if you accidentally double click you're going to get a full block which mobs can spawn on top of. Alternatively you can come in with buttons which are a little bit more expensive, but are a lot easier to place in. Another good option is using moss carpet. And if you accidentally double click, you just add two layers, but doesn't actually let mobs spawn in. Just remember to use the actual moss carpet, because normal carpet will burn near lava. But there's another way that we can further restrict the places where the game will place in hostile mobs. And that's by using the sphere limitation where they can actually spawn in. Notice the higher I go away from the ground, the smaller and smaller area where the mobs will actually be placed in. Any mobs outside this area are actually despawning. You can even see when they walk outside of this area, they will immediately vanish from the game. So if we had the player AFKing up in the air, we only have to worry about spawn proofing a very small area. Because despite the rest of the area being valid locations for them to spawn, it's just too far away from the player. So we'll use all three of these things in our farm here. Make sure we have a nice biome, spawn proof the rest, and also have the player AFKing above the farm. So now we have it so wither skeletons will only spawn in this small area. But it's still not a farm, no mobs are actually dying, and we don't have any skulls. So to kill them, we need to bring them to a central location so we can easily manage them. And just like Endermen will try to kill Endermites, Wither Skeletons will try to kill Piglins. You can see that any Wither Skeletons that get so close, they're able to see this Piglin and then try to come towards them to attack it. But if they're too far away, they won't come towards it. So I captured one of these piglins and put it in the center. To stop it from despawning, I either give it a name tag or find one that can wear some armor. I also made sure it's not holding a crossbow so it won't shoot any wither skeletons. So to make the wither skeletons actually go to a single location and die, and not actually hit our piglin in the center, we need to place some walls around here to protect it. So now the wither skeletons can't be accidentally pushed in and hit the piglin. But we do want the wither skeletons to come down over here and drop down this hole. We can do this by tricking them to think that they can walk even closer than where they are over there. This is by putting down a block that they think they can walk on top of, so they'll walk on top of this trap door, but then we want them to think that they can get even closer on this side than on this side. So by putting in trap doors here as well as here, the Wither Skeletons think they can actually walk all the way on top of this trapdoor and through this trapdoor to attack the Piglin. So even if we happen to open this trapdoor here, they'll still think they can walk that same area and they'll end up instead falling in the hole that it created. So now no matter where they spawn in, they'll see this as being the closest spot they can get and therefore they'll try to walk over it. But we need to make sure that they don't get stuck on the back side here as I think walking all the way around is just too far. We can fix this just by putting in a spacer block there. Now they can't walk there so they'll be forced to walk all the way around and fall down in the hole here. So now we trick the wither skeletons to falling down a single hole so we can have them all in one area which will make it much easier to kill them. But how are we going to kill these guys since we already planned for a player not to be here but instead be Ave King above the farm? Well in order to get the skulls, the wither skeletons have to be killed by player means. This typically means by the player actually killing them, but it also includes things that are used on the player's behalf. Like such as shooting them with arrows or throwing potions on them. Even though these are considered their own entities, they are considered as coming from the player. And one of these things is actually a tamed wolf. So if a wolf would happen to kill something, it will drop XP's just as if the player killed them. But typically wolves will only attack things that you attack first, or things that hurt you first, then they'll come in to the rescue. But there is one exception and that is when it comes to skeletons. Just like wild wolves, tame wolves will also naturally chase after and attack skeletons. This even includes the wither skeletons since they are skeletons. So we just need to contain the wither skeleton and let the dog kill it without it being able to kill our dog. So the way I did this is by having the wither skeletons fall quite far so by the time they hit the bottom they only have a small amount of health. So low that when the dog attacks them it will instantly kill them so they're never able to attack back. And since it was my dog that killed them that means we not only get the loots such as the coal and the bones but we also have the rare chance of getting wither skeleton skulls. So we just made ourselves a wither skull farm without even having to have the player down here so we can save the player to do some more important stuff up above. 
but we still need to turn these wither skeleton skulls into a withers so we can get the nether stars. While I pretend not to know how to summon in a wither, you should pretend to subscribe and leave a like on this video. But in order to summon in a wither, we'll need to either have some soul sand or soul soil. Now there is a renewable way to get soul soil, but it requires soul sand, so we might as well aim for getting this. And the way we get renewable soul sand is through bartering with piglins, just by giving them some gold ingots. They will then in turn give us a bunch of different type of nether related blocks, including the soul sand. So now all we need is to have a piglin that is given some gold ingots. But before we can actually give it gold ingots, we need to get a renewable source of gold ingots. Now we can get gold from killing piglins, but normally you'll just get the gold nuggets. And we can use the new crafter block to craft these down into ingots. And we can even go further by crafting the ingots down into blocks, which we can use these precious blocks for the base of the beacon to get it working. But we can do better than just getting gold nuggets from the zombified piglins. That's because rarely when the zombified piglin is killed by the player, it will actually drop a gold ingot which we can use for barter. So now we need an unlimited source to farm up the zombified piglins. Now here in the nether waste we can get zombified piglins to spawn in, but we also get piglin spawns here, magma cubes, endermen, as well as gas. But we don't want all those other mobs, we just want the zombified piglins for their gold. Now to get rid of the endermen as well as the gas and the big magma cubes, we can put in a small area that has a rook. So when the game tries to put something to spawn in here, if it collides with the block above, the game will just fail to put it in. That means we just have to deal with the smaller magma cubes as well as the piglins. We can stop the normal piglins by putting down some magma. That's because magma will only allow mobs that are resistant to fire to spawn on top of them. And since piglins take damage on magma cubes, the game won't spawn them on top of it. That means we're left with just zombified piglins and the rare occurrence of a small magma cube. But the piglins will spawn anywhere that there is a nether waste biome. That even includes the nether waste biome which continues above the bedrock on Java Edition. So if we just would place down some spawning platforms here, they'll only spawn on this as it can't spawn on bedrock. So I made some area that is full of magma blocks while keeping the roof short, that way we don't get any gassed. So we could put in our zombie piglin farm pretty much anywhere, but we want it kind of close to where the player will be AFKing. So let's figure out where that will be at. So we know the player is going to be AFKing above the wither skeleton farm here, and how high up we can actually place the player depends on how far away we are from the wither skeletons that are down here. Since if the player is greater than 128 blocks away from these guys, they will immediately despawn by the time they fall down here. So if we put our AFK spot up a little bit less than 128 blocks, we'll be up here above the bedrock. So this will be a great spot to operate the Wither Skeleton farm below us, while also operating the Zombified Piglin farm in front of us. Now we could just have these piglins fall to their death and drop nuggets, that we could then use the auto crafter to craft into ingots and use for our bartering. But we might as well take advantage of that the piglins can rarely drop ingots on their own when they are killed by player means. This can be done by using their mob mentality, meaning that if you hit one of their guys, they will all try to come after you and kill you. And as long as there's one zombie piglin left, they will remember to be managed. So what I went ahead and did is put one piglin way back here. And this one will never die or despawn. And that way when new ones are spawned into the game, he will tell them that they should be mad at me. So they'll continue to come over here and try to kill me. Once piglins are coming over here, they're falling down into the small hole here, which has a bunch of minecarts. So by having 24 minecarts in there, when they jump into the hole with them, that means there's more than 24 entities, and it starts applying damage to the piglin, very quickly killing it. And because the zombie piglins were mad at the player, because we hit one of their guys, when they die, they're considered a player kill, and that's why they're also dropping XP's, as well as the rare chance of dropping the gold ingots. So now that we have gold nuggets as well as gold ingots from these guys dying, we can sort those away and then drop them off to this piglin over here. The piglin will then automatically pick up the ingots and then it will barter them for items. The items are then being picked up by this hopper here where we are sorting away the soul sand from all the other items it can give you. The soul sand is then put into this hopper here which is dropped into this slime contraption which shoots it all the way up near the player where the AFK player will pick it up and put it into their inventory. So with the piglins constantly mad at you and constantly spawning in and dying for gold and the player constantly getting the soul sand, all we have to do is put the soul sand into this machine over here, which we can do while AFKing just by holding down the right click button. And then if we press F3 plus T, once this comes up, if we release the mouse button, the game will then hold down that button forever until we click it once again. That way we can automatically play stuff using the player while being AFK. You can even use Alt-Tab to leave your Minecraft game to do other stuff on your computer. 
So with our soul sand placed down, we just need to get the, the Wither Skeleton heads onto the soul sand. So what I have here is a Hopper Minecart. So I'll go underneath, pick up exactly the mount needed in order to summon it in a Wither, all the way up here to where we have another contraption. Then I will place those Wither Skulls into some dispensers. That's because unlike most blocks like Soul Sand, a dispenser can't actually place these blocks down in block form, rather just drops them as an item. But there's a few items that have an exception, one of them is the Wither Skulls. When powered, the dispenser will look for a nearby T-shape, and if that's there, it will actually place in the skull automatically. So we'll still need to have the player placing in all the soul sand manually, but we can have redstone to do the heads. So with the skulls waiting in the dispenser to be dispensed, we just need to make sure the soul sand gets placed down in a T-shape. This is a bit difficult because pistons usually just push it in a straight line. So what I have down here is a piston which is pushing the majority of the soul sand in a straight line this direction. So if I place one in, you can see it'll just push it straight forward. But every once in a while, the piston on the opposite side is going to push it to the side over here, and then this piston is going to push it over this way. So we essentially have two rows of soul sand, one here and one over here. Then when there's enough soul sand in the system, it can actually detect this. And what it'll do is we'll push the soul sand up very quickly. The soul sand that's in front over here will get pushed straight up, where this one will get pushed up and over, producing a T-shape. So we can watch this in slow mode. We can see the piston is pushing the part of the soul sand, which is going to be used for the lower T or the legs of the wither. That gets pushed upwards, and that's going to be pushed forwards. At the same time, the other soul sand is also being pushed upwards. And while these are getting pushed upwards, once they are in position, we will then place in the skulls using the dispensers here. And that will immediately summon in a wither directly inside of this bedrock here. Now the reason why I summoned it inside of bedrock is because this special bedrock formation will prevent the wither from doing damage to the nearby blocks around it. That's because once the wither is inside, it's going to start taking damage from this top bedrock. Typically when the wither takes damage, it'll try to break its way out. It'll either try to bust the blocks around it or shoot off wither skulls. It can't break bedrock, so that doesn't work. And the skulls itself just explode directly inside the bedrock, so none of them escape. And that's why finding the special bedrock formation here on the bedrock ceiling is important for this design to work. We're also killing the wither using a bunch of minecarts down here, as the entity cramming also works on withers. We have one hopper minecart which is picking up the nether stars. Since it doesn't matter how the wither dies, it will always drop a wither star. The star is being transported through all these hoppers and chests here, finally making its way into the storage. So now that we have an unlimited source of nether stars, we need to get the other two items, which are glass and obsidian. Let's take a look at the obsidian. Getting the obsidian is actually relatively easy. That's because we can use the same piglin that we're getting our soul sand from to also produce the obsidian through its bartering. All the loots, including the obsidian, is sent down through this hole here in the bedrock ceiling and into this hopper. This hopper chain is then taking it all the way to this end over here, where we have some redstone sorters, which are automatically sorting out all the different types of items, including the obsidian. Then we can transport it into our storage, which means the last item we need to get is a source of glass. Now you could do this by trading villagers, and by giving them emeralds they'll give you some glass. But this would require the player sitting here and clicking, and we want this farm to be infinitely automatic, meaning that it'll continue to produce beacons without the player having to add any new inputs. Plus you already have the player AFKing up above while holding down a mouse button, so villagers and wandering traders are out of the question. But luckily we have another solution, and that is using my automatic sand generator design. This duplicates the sand as it goes over into the end dimension. Although this trick has been in the game for a long time, it'll probably eventually be replaced by a more intended method of getting sand. But in the meanwhile, this works just fine, and the extra sand it produces is actually on the end side. And over here on the nether side, you can see the items fall through as they get picked up by this water. That's because when it duplicates the sand, it actually comes over here as a block, then it breaks onto the slab, and then the water washes it away. But now since this farm is far away from where the player is AFK in the nether dimension, this machine won't actually operate unless the chunks are being loaded. We can load this side with a chunk loader, but the problem is, is once the sand gets sent over to the end dimension. Now on the end dimension side here, despite items coming through the portal and being shot over here and dropping into our water, this isn't actually loading the chunks in this area in order to transport the items back to the overworld. So we'll either have to have a second account sitting over here in the end dimension loading this, or we could push the player through the portals and use water streams and minecarts to move them over here on a clock delay. But we're just going to go with the easier method by having another account set over here. Let's continue following the sand. 
This water stream is going all the way to the exit end portal. That way we can transport the sand out of the end dimension and into the portal that will leave this dimension. Once it's sent through there, it'll end up at the world spawn point where we have a hopper which is picking it all up. We're then pushing that into a furnace. This is where we're going to smelt the sand down into glass. But if we want this farm to be infinitely automatic, that means we also need to have a source of fuel. Now there's a lot of things you can use for fuel, but we already actually have some coal coming from a wither skeleton farm. So after the wither skeletons were killed, their coal items were being sorted away from the rest of them. They're then being piped along this hopper system here, and then put into this dropper here, which will shoot them through this portal. Once shot through the portal, they'll end up on this hopper here, which is picking up the actual coal item and putting it inside of the furnace. Now we have an unlimited source of glass. Next, we'll transport this over to the nether dimension where we have everything else. We do this by using some redstone dropper and some water, which pushes it back through this portal. And once it comes over here, you can see it will end up falling into this hopper here. This portal where the glass comes through is actually a different portal than the one we're using down here to put in the coal. And despite the coal and glass using the same portal, they actually end up in different locations. That's because this another portal happens to be closer to the portal on top. That means anything that comes through will end up coming out of this one, but anything going in will end up in the same portal as the overworld side. Now that we have the glass falling into this hopper here, we just transport it over along this hopper line here and into the storage right here. So now that I produce farms and machines to get unlimited amounts of nether stars, obsidian, as well as glass, we can push this all into a crafter to make a auto crafter. I'm using my simple design, which is really small, being only three by three by five, yet it can actually craft 99% of all recipes in the game. Plus it's smart enough to turn off when it gets low on ingredients. You can see it pulling in each of the items and then it's getting powered and pushing the new crafted beacons up here into this chest. And just like that guys, I made an infinitely automatic beacon farm. Now watch my farm everything series where I'm designing an automatic farm for every item in the game. Or support my ambitious goals by becoming a Patreon of mine. These type of videos can take hundreds of hours to do, so I appreciate all your help. Otherwise, you can always share the video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye